Hey y'all, welcome back to the Reading Stack. I'm Hunter and I have a wonderful book to share with y'all that I finished recently. It is the book, The Chip by T.R. Reed. It is how two Americans invented the microchip and launched a revolution. This book was really interesting. I got introduced to it by um, looking at several, I guess you would call them tech figures, people like Elon Musk and uh, just different people that have really done a lot of uh, blending of science, engineering, and business. A lot of people have been really influenced and really uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I'm really out of that element, so it was really interesting to get into this world that I didn't know a lot of the details about, maybe a little here and there. This book was really great, really uh, easy to read, though it was so interesting. I took a lot of notes so if you're like me and you make a lot of annotations a lot of note a lot of notes um, this book will definitely be one of those you'll want to mark stuff down it it mainly revolves around of course the microchip and its development but mainly these two figures here um, Robert Noyce and Jack Kilby and uh, how they were both two um, just very scientifically minded engineers, I guess almost explorers of uh, electricity, <laughs> and uh, they were on two different paths, but they both discovered their kind of own way uh, to the semiconductor chip or the, uh, the chip that powers uh, just about any device we use, our computers, our cell phones. Um, our cars. Uh, the importance of the chip can't really be disregarded because it is like powering almost everything these days and uh, the need continues to increase. Uh, I saw after I read this book I saw where maybe due to COVID or something like that there was a, a uh, shortage of semiconductor chips and maybe that was impacting some technology like the PlayStation maybe they like their manufacturing uh, building them and getting them on the market as well as uh, maybe Ford or somebody like that was also having trouble because they couldn't get enough chips made uh, like they needed so very important in our world today but this book really shows way back you know probably 200 years ago at the end of the 1800s it talks about that when people like Thomas Edison they really make these uh, inventions and this pioneering and the uh, very unknown uh, world of electronics and electricity and uh, this book's just really interesting because it, it's a book that is scientific uh, historical you know if you're interested in technology uh, which is very relevant for the world we live in today it continues to be on the rise new technology and better technology every so years what I really liked about this book the most is it was a very interesting story it weaves, but also you get so much um, kind of, it's like a, through this a microcosm into everything, like how technology works. It's like really big ideas, but it gets boiled down in the story, and, and the writer does a great job of making it simple in uh, the 267 pages of this book. So I'm going to read you a few quotes and passages just to give you an idea of what the book's about. It is really uh, educational and really like enlightening. I hope you will enjoy it. Page 69. Speaking of this uh, kind of interaction between scientists and engineers, that uh, it says this, that um, an engineer, of course, knows that there is no machine anywhere that cannot be improved. I think that's a big idea that, you know, if you think about engineers and their mindset is something can always be improved, something can always be modified for the better. Um, it, we never plateau and just reach the uh, end of the line, but technology, it, it's, it's on a cycle going forward. So an engineer's job is to find that way, to improve that uh, tech. Page 16, it begins, in essence, the small community of engineers exploring the frontiers of electronics in the 1950s faced the same abject frustration that had confronted the small community of seamen exploring the frontiers of navigation in the 1590s. At the far western extremity of the Atlantic, 
hard against the shores of Central America, the explorers could look westward from the masthead and see with a wild surmise a vast new ocean, a whole new world beckoning across the isthmus. But there was no way, no way short of the impossibly expensive, time-consuming, and unreliable voyage around the tip of South America. To get to that wonderfully promising new stretch of sea, the future was with insight, tempting, tantalizing, but out of reach. Just so for Jack Kilby, Bob Noyce, and our colleagues, th those are the two main characters, a vast new electronic world was right there on the blueprints, but impossible to achieve. And so physicists and electronics engineers embarked on a great voyage of discovery, searching for a route across the numbers barrier. So in this book, it's very interesting to show how people had these concepts down, but they were behind on different ways. In some ways, the engineers got ahead. They could build something that would work, and the scientists wouldn't be able to understand it yet. And uh, like when the light bulb and things like that was invented, people didn't understand what was really going on with electricity all that well, but they knew it worked and they could use it. And uh, so it's pretty interesting. They have these problems with ma pushing massive numbers, massive amounts of uh, data and functions you know when we're using our computer and you're watching this now there's just so many functions your device is performing at such a rapid uh, mind-boggling pace but before that before we could do that people were having to do stuff very manually and it was uh, mind-numbing it was uh, it was kinda drudgery as the book really shows but giving us that power with the chip and to uh, compute, run our programs and stuff, it is like incredibly simple to use today, but it, it was a big process, big journey. And then on page 84 we have the next one. That's the way Robert Noyce liked it. He defined himself as a technologist and defined that term as the kind of person who is comfortable with risk. And there lies the key difference between a technologist and a businessman. Noyce said, no businessman would have developed the telephone. It's got to be a maverick. Some guy who's been working with the deaf and gets the crazy idea that you could actually send the human voice over a wire. A businessman would have been out taking a market survey and since it was a non-existent product he would have proven conclusively that the market for a telephone was zero. So it goes into this book where you have to be a, like the people that get inspiration from this book are a lot of uh, you'd say visionary people, people that are uh, doing some wild things and they're in Chicago, like Elon Musk and uh, you know maybe Jeff Bezos, uh, people like that that are really uh, doing some neat things but people are looking at them now like you're crazy, uh, I don't think so, that's highly impractical and they may be going from the business mindset but this book really brings out that discovering uh, exploratory just engineering mind that says let's go and get it let's build it um, looking ahead uh, futurism you might say uh, now on page 30 we've got our last quote it says thanks to the engineers and pragmatic inventors like Edison electricity powered much of the world and made the night shine as day but the scientists still didn't know precisely what this mighty force was the mystery of electricity had prompted a number of contradictory hypotheses. Early researchers had postulated that electricity was a fluid, which is why we still talk today of current and flow. Then in the 1880s this notion gave way to a pair of competing theories. One view held that electricity was a wave phenomenon like sound and light. The other school of thought considered the electric beam and the cathode ray tube to be a stream of particles like grains of sand. Wave or particle, the greatest minds in physics pondered, debated, speculated over the question. The answer finally came from one of the most fascinating and formidable intellects in the history of physics, Professor Sir Joseph John Thompson. And so then it goes into a story about this man and uh, his contribution to it. But, but all that to say, it shows people were all over the place that these theories, how they developed, and these devices, it's just very interesting how it happened. and it, It's mind-boggling. We made it work. 
and can do the things we do today. It goes in later in the book, you know, after this has been developed and the cost is cheaper for these chips. You know, at first the cost is like astronomical to build one, but when the manufacturing is there to build these, uh, it's enabling us to go into space, uh, to just do some crazy things where uh, a, the device has to make so many calculations at just fractions and fractions of a second. It's uh, kind of funny how uh, there's the law, I believe it's Moore's law that says, you know, within, it might be 10 years or a certain amount of time, devices, uh, computing power, and their size maybe necessarily diminishes but their power increases and it's so crazy how that was that law you say would uh, that law was kind of introduced several decades ago but how true it is that we continue to be able to compute more powerfully perform more functions and and just do more wilder stuff um, and uh, it's, it's just amazing to see how much how many themes are uh, documented in this book and then you see it everywhere you look, all the news you hear. A big focus on the book is that these two guys who who led this, the pioneers, that they were so, uh, their contributions were so huge in changing our society forever, as the author argues. So he, he's making uh, an argument to really show the relevance of these two people in uh, changing the world and making today uh, today what it is kicking us off in our development you know in the 21st century so it, it's a really amazing contribution and I, th I think I may have heard a little bit about these guys maybe not um, but they're definitely guys you want to hear about and their story and is so interesting and in how different their personalities were their philosophies on inventing I think it's definitely worth the read for that as well as the history and the uh, exploration of just how technology changes and develops I mean it, it's just really amazing you know if you're in a stuff like Discovery Channel uh, if you've seen that show how it's made stuff like that like this is a really good book um, to really flesh that out you know it goes back in time and then it also zooms in to the developments that were made and it features a lot of many uh, a lot of many visual examples, charts, graphs, and uh, you might say sketches or blueprints it shows in here just to show really what was going on and explain it. The author uh, definitely has some really good experience in that area to make it so, not just to show you and it be complex like a bunch of uh, gobbledygook that a stranger to this couldn't take in, but he makes it very bare, simple, plain English and uh, I really love that reading the book. So I think you'd love this book um, if you have any interest in technology or electricity. Um, if you look up to the guys uh, that are kind of leading that futurist uh, initiative, uh, a lot of them have been influenced by this book. It's on many, many favorite lists, and that, that's how I found it. Um, but the book is the book is just really good. Uh, I've never read anything quite like this. But yeah, guys, I hope you will check out this book. It, it is really good, and it really helps you to understand uh, where we are today with our technology and where we've been in the past. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you all have a great one, and we'll have more books for you all soon to read. Peace.